All right, we're going to work on uh, Egypt and the rest of uh, Exodus. And now we want to go to chapter 11, and we want to read 1 through 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor, and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. And Moses says, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon the throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beast. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that he may know how that the Lord doeth put difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And all these that thy servants shall come down unto me, and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out, and all the people that follow thee, and after that I will go out. And he went from went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Alright, so now, get rid of that one. We want to go to 12 and verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year unto you. Hmm. That's pretty cool. All right. Uh, we want 12 through 17. Uh, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, <coughs> and against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Lord. So he executed all the judgment on them false gods. And the blood shall be to you for a token unto the house where ye are. And when you see the blood, I will pass over you. And plague, plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout all your generations. You shall keep it a feast by the ordinance forever. <coughs> Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away the leaven out of your house. Now leaven represents sin. Um, for whosoever eateth leavened bread... From the first day until the seventh day, that shall, soul shall be cut off from Israel. And the first day there shall be a holy conversation. And in the seventh day there shall be a holy conversation to you. 
no manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done for you, be done of you, and ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this self same day have I brought your your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day, and in your generation by the ordinance forever. All right, we want to go to. Uh, we're in the same chapter twelve, and we want to go twenty-seven through fifty-one. All right. That ye shall say, It is a sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passes over the house of the children of Israel in Egypt. When he smote the Egyptian, and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the heads and worshipped. And the children of Israel went away, and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so, they, so did they. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on the throne upon the firstborn of the captive that was in, in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt. For there was not a house where there was not one dead. For he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. Also take your flock and your herd, as ye have said, and he, de he, and he be gone. And bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in, in haste. For they say we be all dead men. And the people took their doubt before it was leaven, their dough, excuse me, and their kneading throughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. All right, now whenever you hear the word spoil, it's not what you think. That means take away. They, they they use the word, oh, that's a sport little brat, you know. That's the way it's used. He, he's no good for nothing. You know. I mean, they sport. They took it away from them. Subtract. You know. They're not not doing anything, you know. Um, let's see, how am I? Anyway, you can understand what I'm saying. It's, sport is not what you think what they say it is today were people say the Bible's not true it is true it is and if you I mean you take the word spoil here you think they're spoiled right and they get everything they want okay they spoiled the Egyptians in other words they took it away from the Egyptians all right it's opposite and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Soskoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. And the mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herd and every much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of dough, which they brought forth out of Egypt. For it was not leaven, because they were thrust out of Egypt, and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals. And the sojourn 
and the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was four hundred and thirty years. And it came to pass at the end of four hundred and thirty years, even the selfsame day, it came to pass that all the host of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. For it is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generation. <coughs> And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. And every man's servant that brought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. For foreigners and an hired servant shall not eat thereof. For, let's see, in one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not <clears throat> carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall you break a bone thereof. And all the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And, uh, and when a stranger so sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all the males be circumcised. And, uh, and then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourns among you. Dust did all the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their anger, or, or by their armies, I'm sorry. Alright, let's go to Exodus 13 and 3. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall be no leavened bread be eaten. Okay, so now we want to go to 8 and 9. Verse 8 and 9. And thou shalt show thy sons in that day saying this is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt and it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thy hand and for a memorial between thine eyes that the Lord Lord saw Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Alright, let's go to verses 14 through 18, and we're still in 13. And it shall be when thy son ask thee in time to come, saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him? By strength of hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt in the house of bondage. And it came to pass when Pharaoh would hard, hardly let us go that the Lord showed all the firstborn, slew all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all that opened the matrix, being male, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. And that shall be for a token upon thy hand for all the frontlets between thy eyes, for all my, uh, 
for by strength of the hand of the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines through that that was near for God said leaves prayer adventure the people repent when they see war and they return unto Egypt but God led the people through the way of the wilderness of the, the Red Sea and the children of Israel went up hardness hardly hardness out of the land of Egypt. Let's see, do, okay, we're done with that one. So we're going to go to chapter 14, and we need 5 through 12. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people, that they say, Why? We done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us. Nah, they didn't want that. They didn't want to do the work. <laughs> and he made ready his chariots, and took his people with him. I want you to notice how also how quick that he forgot that his son died, real quick. And he took six hundred chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt, and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand, and the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them and camped by the sea beside pi Hareth before bel Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Therefore hast thou dwelt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt. Am I supposed to? What? Mama Cat. Where? Okay, I'm supposed to go through 12. One more. Is not this the word that we did tell the Egyptians, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. They, I don't see them saying that at all. I see them, let's get out of here. We want to go. And I have a cat in the way. And she took over my paperwork. Alright, I'm going to go on to uh, chapter 16 is where we are now. And we want 1 through 6. And they took their journey from Elm and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elm and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron, and in the wilderness. Where am I supposed to go? To six. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hands of the Lord in the land of Egypt. Then we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread, 
in the full. For ye have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moses and Aaron said unto the children of Israel, At evening, when ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out of the land, the land of Egypt in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he hath in your murmuring against the Lord. And what are we that ye murmur against us? Now I'm going to say this right here. We are getting ready to have all of our food taken away. And, I mean, you already know what uh, Billy Gates was doing. And uh, I, 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 see, I see this right here coming back. And, I mean, God's going to take care of his people. His people is he going to take care of. And I can see this right here coming right back into play. Believe it or not. All right, we want to go uh, uh, 16 and 32. And Moses said, This is a thing which the Lord commanded. Fill an omer of it to be kept for your, your generation, that they may see the bread where which I have fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. You know, that right there don't even lie. I, ain't even no more. You can't see it. Because it's supposed to be in the Ark of the Covenant. And then it's gone. All right, we want to go 17. It went this back now. 17 and 3. And the people thrust for, thirst for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? You know, I'm afraid that people's going to be going back to this and not really trusting him. If you trust in the Lord, he's not going to let you go if he, he he's there. He's going to take care of you. Through what what do you need? The only really thing that you really need is power off. Uh oh. Is you're gonna have to uh have a place to go to the bathroom probably. <laughs> oh no, you're gonna have to have food and water. That's the main thing that you need in, to survive anything. And um uh, Alright, let's go to eighteen. And we want one. When Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt, then Jericho, Moses' father-in-law, took Zephyrah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back, and her two sons, of which the name of the one was Gershom, for he saith, I have seen an alien in the strange land, and the name of the other was Elsor, for, for the God of my father saith he was my help, and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his son and his wife unto Moses in the wilderness, where he encamped at the mount of God. And he said unto Moses, I, thy father-in-law Jethro, am come unto thee, 
and thy wife and her two sons with her. Now I had to read all the way down to six because we got Dotties in there. So, uh, that's the reason why I come, I went on. Alright, we want to go to 19 and 1. And the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Alrighty, we want 20, and we want verse 2, wait a minute, we got 20 and verse 2, I am the Lord thy God, which they have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Alright, 22. Chapter 22 <clears throat> and verse 21. Do, 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 do. Thou shalt never vex a stranger nor oppress him, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. So don't you don't want to de depress anybody, <coughs> you want to lift people up, which nowadays is very hard. I'm going to tell you, it is hard. Alright, we want to go to chapter 23, and we want verse 9. Also, thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Let's skip down to 15. Thou shalt keep the feast of, feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread even, it, seven days as I command thee in the time appointed a month Ahab. For in it thou camest out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. We have two daughters. And the feast of harvest in the first fruit of thy labor which thou hast shown in the field, and, fe and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Okay, let's go to Exodus 29 and verse 46. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God, that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, that I may dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. Alright, let's go to chapter 32. And we want 1 through 11. And when the people saw Moses delay to come down out of the mountain, and the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron, and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us, as for this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt. We want not what is to become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives and your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Now, I got, I got to say here that God wanted them to learn a lesson from getting all this gold and silver and everything, and, and to show them that this is a curse to them. That this, this is the way I'm reading what I'm getting, uh, my understanding now, is gold and silver, jewelry, anything like that is a curse to you, whether you want to believe me or not. So, when you walk down that aisle to get that wedding ring, think about the curses that has come upon you. How many families really stay together now? All right. And the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hands and fashioned it with graven tools 
after he had made it a molten calf, and they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Now, right there is a big old porky. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is the feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow, and offered burnt offering, and brought peace offering. And the people sat down to eat, and to drink, and to rose up to play. Now, I want you to notice that the Lord God, and in this, now here's their Lord God. So they got two Lord Gods. The one is the Creator, and then the molten image. Alright. And the Lord said, Moses, get thee down, for thy people, they're not his people right now, <laughs> they're, they're Moses' people, which thou brought out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it. And have sacrificed unto the and thereunto, <coughs> and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen not these people, and behold, it is stiff necked people. And therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord, the Lord his God, and said, Lord, why doeth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? See, Moses reminded God, hey God, I didn't do this, you did it. I didn't do this. You did it. All right. Wherefore, should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out and slay them in the mountain, and to consume them for the fur fierce, the face of the earth, turn from thy furious anger, repent, others evil against thy people he's like hey god uh please don't do this Re don't do it please don't these are your people don't do it all right let's skip down to 23 for they said unto me make us god which shall go before us for as for moses the man that brought us out up out of the land of Egypt, he wot not what is to become of him. All right, so now we got that one. Let's go to 33, and we want one. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, and to the land which I sworn to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, uh, and to thy seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Parasites, and the Havitites, and the Jebusites, and to the land flowing with milk and honey, where I will not go up in the midst of thee. For thou art stiff-necked people, and I consume thee in the way. Alright, now I had to go all the way down to three, because we have dotties. Alright, we want to go 34 and 18. Now, I am not going to do the concordance because of the time. All right, we want to go to 18, 20, let's see, 34, 18. All right, the feast of the unleavened bread shalt thou keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, as I command thee, in the time of the month of Abad. For the month Abad thou comest out of Egypt. 
So, God wants them to remember that on that He made the first of the month a bad, and that's the reason why that He made that their January, as we have January. And I'm gonna say they have messed up the calendar so much and all. I've got a calendar somewhere, but I have no idea where it's at. And uh, it would be most definitely off by right now. All right. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you next week. I love each and every one of you. Remember, Jesus Christ died for you, and he loves you and repent.